Hey everyone, we're back for another uh, stream clan war game. We have uh, Euro, Eurotomo Alex versus Sir Voltar. Uh, Eurotomo Alex is running a HMT uh, Keeper of Air Unicorn deck, so this is straight up aggro, nothing terribly surprising. Uh, looks like it plans to win fast with spreading the darkness and common cause and the room of skirmisher. Sir Voltar is running uh, Lion Splash Crab Seeker of Air. So we're looking at a honor gain, looks like. Uh, although there are a few stat pumps and a crashing wave for interest. Uh, They've already got it started, and uh, so Voltar is already coming in mentally strong. Uh, looks like Uni has the first player token. Oh, what do we got this interesting over here? Uh, honestly, it doesn't look like much. Way of the open hand is good to clear blockers. Uh, over here on the line side, nothing terribly shocking. A lot of attachments uh, could be useful, uh, and we shall see. So, on the line side, we flip the staging ground, the Sonuri, Honored General, Zentaro, and the Coma Prodigy. Uh, Unicorn opens up with a Yasumura. Uh, we see a lot of good Join the Fray targets. Sir Voltar just hard passes. Interesting. I don't think... I think he's... I'm not sure what happened here. I am very, very confused. Um, so Voltar bids one, your total Alex bids five, so we're going to see a race for honor versus a race for provinces. Sir Voltar doesn't have the conflict characters to really do a lot. Maybe he's open for a Forebear's Echoes on a break. Um, so if your Tomo Alex wants to play around that, I guess he goes for a staging ground. Uh, plays a Wayfinder, sees Shameful Display in Province 2, so I believe that's the Sonurian Honor General. Yeah, that that hard pass on turn one just does not seem like it was the right play against an aggro HMT deck. So we're probably going to see military Uh, Earth is really the only choice. It's the most impactful and it'll punish the hand. Yeah, I don't... Oh, he's going to air. Okay, so he's going to pull the honor down for Sir Voltar. Uh, doesn't defend, we don't have anything to do. Prepared ambush. 
Okay, so we're going to see an honor general come in. Uh, Tetsuko comes in, which is going to tax all of the characters he purchases. Uh, I imagine his main purchase is going to be the honor general. And a honor. Uh, that might stop a break. It's certainly going to make your Tomo Alex have to invest some cards into this. Uh, but Tetsuko is definitely going to be wise as Sonori. Okay. Stopping a break here would be pretty good. Uh, we're probably going to see a shameful trigger. Ambusher comes down, so shameful is not triggering. He is out of fate, so join the phrase is not going to be an issue. We see a spoils of four played. Uh, fishing a censure, so I think he's anticipating this game being quick. Uh, herd ambush goes away, steals an honor, but it's not the two. Uh, I imagine we're going to see the Zentaro come in on the general. Uh, and then. Ready's Yasamura. I would swing Earth at is that a tactical ingenuity. That is a tactical ingenuity. I would definitely swing Earth at the windswept yurt. Moves logistics over. Uh, presumably that's mainly to draw a card and possibly bait onto that stronghold. Plays logistics to another logistics to move the Shiotomi encampment. So that is where he's going. I imagine he's going to steal the windswept yurt. Water is also not a bad choice to straighten the scenario and get a second conflict. I don't know that Yasumura is going to stand in the way of this. Does not defend. Probably would have gone water. Pops the yurt for money. Steals the encampment. I don't think that was really worth doing since it's going away anyway. Um, I don't believe he's running any cavalry characters. He is not. So that stealing that wasn't worth it, and you pitched a spirit caller. 
I think you were, uh, you came out behind on that one. And you can't really play Call to War since you went void. Because then the Yasumura is just going to stick around. Uh, the even the odds is good. It'll get him a defense. Uh, and possibly, you know, given the fact that he's running Kensa Nogaka, Spectral Visitations would be a good, a bad hit for Unicorn, good hit for Lion. Uh, he does void the Yasumara. No real surprises there. So Multar having to think about something. Decides to pass. See Military Earth come in. I would have left the Void Ring on the table. That's just me though. Finds Kensen Nogaka, which is a little awkward because the way he has to move in, any of his characters will also honor them. So Kensen Nogaka is effectively blank. Uh, him having a stand could be useful. Because you really want to tax out the unicorn player's hand. Uh, Gains of Fate off of the Seeker of Air. Even the odds, Sunuri comes in, she'll get honored, but she's going to get honored anyway. Kensa Nogak can't honor her. Uh, playing a Kami Unleashed on defense here with one Fate could be cheeky. Because uh, then it would be honored, and when you swing next turn, you can pop it on the air ring and uh, gain an honor off of that. Uh, Kensa Nogaka is kind of low, low to no value at the moment. Your time on Alex passes, so Voltar having to think about something. I don't imagine there's a whole lot that would be useful here. Uh, Four Bears Echoes could get him a Honor General, which doesn't stop the break. Or it stops a break but doesn't stop the earth ring, so you'd be down to one card at the end of the turn. Um, we see a pass and a break. This card's a common cause. That hurts. Honestly, it feels like he should have come and caused after he evened the odds. Because that would have gotten him another attack. Uh, and then firing for a little bit of honor pressure. Yeah, I think I think going void on that conflict was, was a not good thing. See a pass on the rest of the conflicts. Uh, Sir Voltar cannot play Call to War right now. All that'll do is undo his victory with the Void Ring. 
because uh, then we'll see Yasumura stick around again. Yeah, I don't, I, doing that, like, I, I, under, I can understand why, uh, I don't understand why in conjunction with uh, going void on that conflict. Because this game could quite easily end this turn, in which case voiding the Yasumura accomplished nothing, and it having two fate on it would also accomplish nothing. Uh, she didn't tell me encampment goes away, because it was never going to be useful. Uh, okay, we see Yasumura dupe and a border rider. Uh, if Sir Voltar was going to accomplish anything to lock down the game, it'd be this turn. We see him by a prodigy with one fate to gain the honor. Uh, I would be of the mindset that this game is going to be over sooner rather than later, and we'll probably buy the Spirit Caller naked. In fact, I don't know, but I'd even fate the hero of the three trees. Uh, right at dawn gets triggered, so he is down to no cards. Spirit caller with one. I mean, I guess. Because let's see, the honor general takes you to 20s and Taro takes you to 21, 22. I don't know why he staging ground there, because those cards are now going to get automatically discarded, and that's less than ideal. Uh, the Mozo would have been useful next turn. Uh, we are probably going to see. Uh, political attack for sure. Uh, Zentaro and the Prodigy should go in together. Uh, is he running Endless Plants? He is not. They do not need to go in together. No Endless Plains, he's probably not going to defend. The one you don't want to hit, I guess, is probably going to be into the Forbidden City. Uh, Rebels is probably on the box, so Upholding could be uh, an interesting hit. Sir so Voltar bids one, your turn Alex bids two. Uh, so what are we at now? Uh, 20 currently, 21 with the Zentaro, 22 with the Hero, 23 if he Spirit Calls in the General, and if he wins the game, it's 25. So that is within the realm of possibility to get an honor win on turn two. Uh, you have to run at the border rider. And I would run at it political. Because you want to break it. Uh, and on a political conflict, it can't, it can't join the fray. see political error. Going at the border rider.
Yes, it is. It is looking possible that uh, Sir Voltar here is going to on route. Uh, it's at least on the table, uh, upholding some terrible hit here because he's got no cards in his hand anyway. Um, no defense pass. Uh, I would not tactical ingenuity here. Uh, I'd play out the card and then just favorable grounds in Zentaro uh, into the next conflict to resolve the tactical ingenuity. I'd play the card if you can. Sir Voltar looks like he's having way too long of a think about this. Uh, I don't like that. Because if you couldn't play out the card in your hand, then that card's not going to get chosen for the upholding authority break. It, it would have been better to favorable grounds him in. Um, To, to trigger that tactical ingenuity, especially since there's spectral visitations and fertile fields. You could have rebuilt, he could have rebuilt his hand a little bit. Uh, gets a call to war. So that's probably, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, that just feels like bad timing on triggering that. Place call to war. Put a fade on him. That could basically put uh, your Tomo Alex in a position to where he'll lose next turn. Kami goes away, which is a little unfortunate. If he had bought Spirit Caller and the Hero of the Three Trees naked, uh, he would have won. And I do believe I said that that was the thing to do. Sees fertile fields under the uh, favorable ground, so that's where he's going to go. Doesn't especially matter who gets. Oh no, he can actually win. So he can still win right now. This, this is this is a thing that can happen. Uh, He spirit calls in the general, so he doesn't lose unopposed. Uh, your Tomo Alex kind of has to go fire right now uh, to stop it from happening. Three trees gets evaded. Let's see fertile fields. Uh, so Voltar gains a fate, which does him maybe some good based on what card he draws off the fertile fields. Uh, defense with the Prodigy. Yeah, I still like buying those naked to play the Kami. Uh, the Hero of the Three Keys and Spirit Caller. Uh, 
Thunderbox, we've got Dishonorable Assault. Um, so yeah, there's there shouldn't be any real thinking about this. I don't think there's anything Sir Voltar could have gotten in his hand that does anything really. Uh, throwing an honored blade on Yasamura would be funny. Um, there can't be that much to consider here. It doesn't matter what he has, right? Trying to see money. Yeah, there's nothing in his hand right now that makes any kind of a difference. I wonder if there's some uh, team chat going on in the background. Doesn't feel great. I mean, it'll stop the break and stop an HMT trigger. Join the fray for a border rider. Tactical ingenuity on the honor general. So we're we're going here. This is. Uh, Stopping the break here it now becomes a, a win or lose situation. It definitely feels that. Okay, so if Lewis can, or Sir Voltar can get into a common cause with the tactical ingenuity, uh, he can win he can win if he gets a common cause or a way to sacrifice that Centauro, which I think is only common cause in his deck. Looks like we have some team members coming in. Curve blade comes down. We get a four bearers echoes. Which will actually do it as well. As long as Uh, your Tomo Alex does not have a way of the open hand. I don't know, he went firing. None of this matters. Prodigy goes home. passes because he doesn't have to do anything. 
uh, break happens. Uh, he could dishonor the general before it leaves play. Yep, we see HMT trigger. Uh, we're going to have a total of 10 force coming at the box. dishonors the fire general, so or the honor general, so he doesn't get the honor off of that. And I believe that is basically game. Because I we have one card in hand to your and Alex's six with a huge fate discrepancy uh, means any cab reserves is gonna be basically catastrophic. Uh, and we know he got a four bears echoes, so he needs the fate for that. It's frostbite and crossing. Super doesn't matter. He'll gain an honor to go up to 23. Uh, no defense, because it really doesn't matter. Uh, so Voltar gains the honor. Wins it. Straightens Antaro. Uh, saving the echoes for... The box, which I don't think matters because he pulled the general out already, and that was going to be his biggest force bump. Uh, I mean, I guess it comes down to if he put spectral visitations or uh, dishonorable assault under the box. Uh, dishonorable assault has always felt like a weird. Uh, yeah, Hunsucker, he's broken. Uh, Kensen Nogaka, shameful display, and fertile fields. Uh, the Kensen Nogaka has that weird fancy flight logo white out on it because it's got art by Noah Bradley on it. And so uh, any card he did art for looks like that now. Skirmisher comes in. Uh, yeah, this is basically all over but the crime. Um, I don't see... Yeah, pulling in the general early was, was rough. Um, if there's a special visitations under the box, uh, things could be interesting. Um, I don't think they're interesting enough. Uh, if it is Dishonorable Assault, that is always at odds with the style of play because you never have cards in your hand to do enough. And we're going to find out here. Uh, the downside is he's got enough money for a cab reserves and he's got a Tetsuko and a Minime Kaze regulars. So, it's a dishonorable assault, so it doesn't even matter. Chroniclers comes in, and we see a censure, and that is all she wrote. And there's a GG's exchanged. Uh, yep, there we go. And that is, that's what we got for this one. Uh, game went pretty quick. They started at four, half hour game. Um, 
and that's where we are. Thank you for joining, uh, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.